Wishbone. Wishbone Entertainment. Show with bro Jack behind the lens. Today I got 916 on Rico Too Smooth. What's up, with it, man? You know, I'm tapped in with my niggas, man. You know, about to uh, show some love. We just gonna chop game on some regular Dagler shit, man. Let's get to it. So, where we at right now? Man, right now we in Broderick, old Broderick to be exact, man. One of the oldest hoods around this motherfucker. Uh, you know, there's a lot of history between the shit. A lot of, uh, a lot of death, a lot of bloodshed, you know, a lot of uh, happiness, you know, from this motherfucking neighborhood. But uh, first and foremost, we a small congregated hood, you know what I'm saying? Everybody all mixed and masters, but everybody know each other. Basically, everybody family related to each other, know uh, know each other one way or the sort. That's, that's where we at right now. This is the soil, man. This is where I grew up at. <coughs> What side of Sacramento is this? This is the west side of Sacramento. Some okay. motherfuckers, some motherfuckers try to like say we we not considered uh, Sacramento. Back then, we didn't really give a fuck if we was considered Sacramento or not, cause really like we pressed our hood before anything. We like nigga, it's Broderick or nothing. We, we we from Broderick. We from Broderick, California. We not from Sacramento, California, but we are. You feel me? Yeah. It's the west side of Sacramento. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no other west side of the sack, so. We it. This Broderick, is, it. is that a street? Is that a... Broderick is a, a little tiny neighborhood. If you look it up on GPS, you'll see that motherfucker. It'll yeah. say West Sacramento as a city, and then it'll have a little dot right there that say Broderick. Basically, we a small community, a small yeah. little neighborhood, but this shit been booming for years. So, what was the day like out here when you was younger? Man, that shit was... That shit was... That shit was crazy, man. I fucked with it, man. A lot of shit was going on, man. A lot of us uh, back then, as young niggas, we, we used to like, our hobby was like, now, you know, they got the bike life and all that, and all the youngins, they out there on their bikes. Well, us, we was gang banged out, so we was just on our beach cruisers. That was our thing. Clean ass beach cruisers with the uh, cholo, yeah, up, with yeah. the cholo setting up handlebars like that. Nigga, all the homies be nigga, ah, ah, mobbing, nigga. We mobbing to the park, nigga. Just chilling, nigga, smoking, like, it was it was it was very lit back then. You feel me? I should say like the uh, the energy. Motherfuckers was outside. You see a lot of kids playing. Uh, a lot of motherfuckers uh, out and about. You see your homies whenever you just go into the store on some regular shit. Yeah. Show my nigga, man. You know that's how smart there shit was. No was. cell phones then, so that's how you linked up with right. everybody. Right, hey, yeah. what's up with it, nigga? Whoa, whoa. You feel me? So like, nigga, that's how the hood was. You feel me? It was it was alive back then. You feel me? Growing up. What y'all like to do? I ain't gonna lie, as kids, like before even um, you know, niggas started gang banging and being uh, getting all to that street shit. And we used to go over the levees right here. We call them the levees. You feel me? Is right there next to the river. We go over there, nigga, and we was just kids at the time. So I ain't gonna lie, we used to be on some cat shit, fucking with the bums, nigga. Uh, Tearing they tents up. Now I'm older. I'm like, nigga, that that that's fucked up. You feel me? But as kids, that's what we did for fun. We go over there, nigga. We got our airsoft guns. <laughs> we sitting there shooting the tents, little bums in their head, nigga, from a distance and shit. Just canning off, nigga. That's what we used to like to do. Ride our bikes everywhere, nigga. Just nigga, fuck around. Go to Broderick Park. Be right there. Get drunk till you get sick, nigga. Everybody go home. Get into some shit. That's just how it was. That's what we like to do for fun, you feel me? Yeah. So how long you been out here for you? Was born and raised? Nah, uh, I actually moved here to Broderick in about, I'm gonna say, 2010. I was about uh, 11 years old or so. And uh, that just ended up being my, my, my place of residence after that. And uh, I grew up there through my teens. 
eventually got sent to uh to the halls and then from the halls to YA. My mom moved uh, while I was locked up. But basically, uh, all my teenage years, from 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah, yeah, all the way, it was, it was just all full course <laughs> there. This was my, this was my home, you feel me? So I, I lived, I didn't live there for like my whole life or nothing like that, but a good majority of my life. What's the closest corner store you used to go to when you was younger? Before. <laughs> I used to stay right there uh, 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 at these uh, spot called Transitional Living. It was like uh, it was like homes for uh, families getting in, trying to transition back into a, a, a home. You feel me? Basically for the less fortunate type shit. But uh, right around the corner, it's right over here up the street. It's called my. It was Muhammad's. I don't know what it's called now. Some deli, some shit. But. Uh, it was Muhammad's, you feel me? We knew Muhammad's and his sons, and we knew his whole family there, you feel me, for, for years, you know? He, he done watched us grow up all the way till he was older and shit. Somehow, I think they just sold the uh, store. It's a new owner. They got some whole other bullshit over there. But that was the closest store we used to go to right there, right around, right around the street. Just to get everything up. Yep. So, what, so what's the difference in the uh, project now to when it was back then? How they think change up? Well, you know, a lot of people uh, done got caught up, went to jail, and got washed away. Uh, a lot of homies had passed away. Uh, the gang injunction came through and wiped niggas out. Like we had gang injunction like before our times. You feel me? I'm twenty. I'm twenty five, about to be twenty six. But even before my time, the homies was dealing with gang injunction, and. Uh, it seemed like they finally was just like, you feel me? They was doing their work and they was just getting niggas up off the streets. They was sweeping niggas. All the niggas that was trying to like really make a name and niggas was keeping shit active and the whole little shit, they was wiping them out, sending them away. You know, some niggas flopped, some niggas kept it solid. But for the most part, you know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas that, that in my generation, nigga, they all doing their own shit. You feel me? They, we all doing our own shit, so we ain't got time for the old school yeah. games like we was doing when we was young. That means we was out there at the bar. <coughs> we meeting up, what's up? We meeting at Broderick Park, what's up? We gonna meet, we gonna go right here and get some drink. We not doing that no more, so. The hood, like, it just seemed like it just, you know, it calmed down a, super a lot, you feel me? And uh, it's just, it's not the same, you feel me? It's not the same, the same energy don't bring it, but this is my hood, this is where I come from, so. I'm gonna, uh, regardless, bring that spirit up and uh, keep that energy going to keep my shit lit. Hell yeah. Who did you look up to when you was younger? When I was younger, I ain't gonna lie. I looked up to basically any motherfucker that was older than me and that I felt like it was a role model. Cause, you know what I'm saying, my, my brother had uh, got life without parole. So he was absent for like my whole upbringing to me, you know, me growing up. I ain't, had, I ain't have a dad, so I was easy uh, influence, I should say. So any older one that even played that role or I felt like, you feel me, okay, this nigga's tight, like, you feel me, he's older. I was looking up to them niggas, no one specifically. It was just niggas like that. And I, I was, I was kind of like, steady going through a phase where I'm uh, being pushed and poisoned and you know I had a I had a I had to find out years later like man I, I, I wasn't doing shit that I wanted to do and I wasn't being me I was just you feel me so I put on a little front of shit bro yeah that's what I looked up to man what's the crazy one of the craziest stories you got out here Yeah, craziest you can talk story. About that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Craziest story, I say, uh, <clears throat> all right, this one, uh, this is a cool one. I remember, t I used to tell my mom and shit about it. All right, so back then, a lot of us young niggas, we, our thing was hen licks, you feel me? And uh, weed licks was in general when it was come uh, harvest time, October, you feel me? Once October came, nigga, all the homies, we all doing our homework, like, Nigga, I think this house on Wooty Woot, nigga, I smell it. Like, we all giving each other info and shit. Like, nigga, I'm about to hit it. Nah, I'm about to hit it. So, nigga, 
we was on a we was on a sick one when it came to these weed plants, right? So nigga, niggas just tearing up the streets. One night we go out, we tear up the street. We decide to uh, hit these Asian niggas' house. We like, we gonna hit this Asian nigga spot. Like they got fat ass plants, nigga. Like chunky, nigga. All we gotta do is get like a little ladder and go over. So nigga, we waited till nighttime. We had like three failed attempts because we was trying to go and then they was coming out like checking up on shit. So we waited for like an hour or two long, <laughs> nigga, like really on some stealth shit. Like, fuck it, we gonna wait. We gonna wait. So finally we was like, all right, it's good, it's clear. Nigga, we hop on the ladder. Ah. Nigga, we all go over. And nigga, right when we go over, like these niggas must have been on their shit because they come out, the lights go on, boom. And I'm a young nigga at the time too, hella short and skinny nigga. The homies get up out of their ASAP. Boop, boop, they hop over the fence, they gone. Uh -huh. I'm a young nigga, I'm looking at the fence. I'm like, oh, nigga, I can get up and trap. Or I felt like, nigga, I was gonna get up, pr try to go across the fence and get blam or something. Yeah. So I'm a, I said, I'm gonna stay right here. So the plants were so big that they covering, them, covering shit up. I'm in all black like this. I'm like this, nigga. I, I'm, Curled into a fetal position. They must have came with a big ass machete, nigga. Coming through their garden like this with the light. Like that, my shit just do do, do do. They whacking shit. <laughs> Who's back here? So in their own language though. Yeah. Boom, boom, cutting shit down. I'm like, oh shit, nigga. I done fucked up fucking with these Asians, nigga. So I'm back there scared as fuck, nigga. And nigga, they was back there for like uh 25 minutes searching. And, and this old lady, you feel me, she had searched and she went right there by me and she she went back again and then she just kept going like she didn't see me. Or maybe she didn't, but nigga, she didn't say nothing. They went back inside the house. I'm the last nigga uh, to go. I said, fuck this, I got up. I didn't even get no plants or none of that, nigga. I'm out of out here. I <clears throat> hopped over the fence. They came out the front, chased my ass. I got away. That was some crazy shit. One out of many. Uh, yeah. True story, though. Was the police be tripping out here? Super. I was just telling you about the uh, injunction. Yeah. It's a gang injunction, so that shit basically, uh, it's a bunch of rules and regulations that is held accountable just for our community, for our neighborhood. Meaning we can't be out after a certain curfew and we can't be mm -hmm. out in public with more than uh, groups of three, uh, they had all types of rules, like, bro, like, oh, shit. it was Your bad. Section. Yeah, just all in our own section. And that's that's what that's what was kind of like tearing us down because them niggas was moving me and like, you feel me? If you was on probation, parole, whatever, like, they, nigga, they own shit. Gang injunction, that, you getting, you getting violations for, for doing normal shit. You going, you can't be at the park with your, that's what you yeah. saying? I can't be out to park with my barbecue, family? Well, yeah. yeah. I'm at the barbecue? Nope, you're on gang file. It's gang injunction. That's how the cops was doing it, so. Yeah, them niggas is... Them niggas on shit. Yeah. And when you was coming up, what spots was popping? What did you... Like, as of what? Just going out? Shit, uh... Everywhere, I ain't gonna lie. Back then, everywhere with, uh... This, uh, Discovery... That's right here across the bridge. That's right here at the uh, Discovery. It's the river. <coughs> you feel me? Uh, that spot right there, everybody go to it. So it's what like... It? Like a club? No, nah, no, nah, Discovery. It's a uh, it's a uh, beach right here, uh, the river. Okay. We got a river right here. So uh, Discovery stay cracking, nigga, to, uh, in the summertime. Boats coming out. Niggas uh, barbecuing out there. You feel me? And plus it's just... Uh, and a racial one congregating that motherfucker. Everybody from everywhere. So it get greasy all the time. So uh Discovery was one one spot that was cracking back then, you feel me? Um shit. What else? What else? Uh is it popping down too? Yeah, it's still niggas that uh got jumped out there, the whole shit. <coughs> yeah, niggas done got shot, stabbed over there, like it's bad or like you can't even really go out there to be having a good time unless you, you feel me, you know your shit. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we had uh, also too when I was a kid, they don't really have it no more. I think they do. They have one spot, but nigga, we used to go to the uh, skating ring. Skating yeah. ring used to go crazy. Yeah. I remember I was like 
probably like nine or something, nigga. But nigga, I remember uh, it was, used to go all the way from high schoolers all the way to teenagers. Mm-hmm. Like they nigga, had music slapping, they was music dancing, slapping, yeah. nigga, niggas was dancing, nigga, like. I wasn't doing nothing back then, but I'm pretty sure niggas was blowing or something. You yeah. feel me? A little drink tipsy and shit. They was in there, nigga, having the time of their life. They got the lights going off on there, nigga. Hella bitches, you feel me? All different ages. So it's like, that was popping back then, too. And then, uh, uh, also, we have like a little bowling spot, too. Uh, Country Club Lanes. That shit go crazy, too. It's in the north. But also, the same shit. Motherfucking different people be over there, so... Sometimes it's like, you know, you get yourself into some shit. But, yeah, those are all the shit that I know that was popping, you feel me? Yeah. What about a uh, favorite spot to eat? What would you expect, though? Uh, famous spot to eat. Uh, in my hood, Sal's Tacos. We got Sal's Tacos right here. Uh, we got, uh, yeah, Sal's Tacos was my shit back then as a kid. I think they, uh, they, they got their shit shut down, so... It ain't now. They make people come out here to your sex or they smack it off. Man, uh, I would have to send them to uh, Maya's Taco Truck. That's the most like authentic and uh, fire ass. All they meat, they got in there. Pastor, everything they got is fire. So I would send them to Maya's Taco Truck. You feel me? That's where the where the gas at. Well, when you was getting fitted, where was you going to get get your gear? At? I was a young nigga back there, so you know we was off of the uh, the pro uh, the pro fires, the uh, tall tees. So they was hella long as fuck. They had the jabos all over there. It's called Top Line. They still there to this day too, and they remember me. They like damn. <coughs> they remember going there as a little nigga, like buying hella little red belts and nigga red chucks and shit. Nigga hella gang little attire. That's the that was the spot. Top Line. It's still open to this day. Top line is out here too. Okay. Yep, yep. And they got all the old school shit, man. If you if you an old school type nigga, you feel me? You like that old school shit? They still got the Ben Davis over there. They still got the uh, hella different Dickies. You know what I'm saying? They they got all the shit over there. You feel me? That's the that's the store. What about studio? What was you recording at? Out here, I didn't uh, I didn't really uh, had no studio, especially like growing up. I wasn't even into that shit yet. Like, I didn't uh, start getting into it till uh, I got out of CYA in uh, 2017. So, uh, when I did get out, the first studio I been to was uh, 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 Q. Q made the beat, and they go crazy. Uh, he's a known uh, producer, yeah. and he be doing this shit for years, you feel me? But that was one of the first ones, and I, I ain't even, I was new to this shit, so uh, I ain't really even know what the fuck was going on, but that was one of the first ones I went to. What was your first song you did? Uh, first song I did was called Get Rich. Yeah. Uh, that out? Yeah, it's, it, I think, oh wait, uh, nah, so, some shit happened, bro. I was fucking with some, some nigga, you feel me? And he was publishing my music and whatnot. Nigga got ghost, took the song down, hella cat shit. So I made a remix. And then I put my cousin uh, BG Poppy on there. Yeah. And uh, BG Poppy got on that motherfucker and we gassed that and we made a video of that. So that was like one of my first ones. It's on YouTube right now. We're gonna look that one up. How'd you get your name? Shit, right here, man. Right where we standing, man. In this house. This is my uh, godfather spot right here, man. Uh, I grew up over here, you feel me? I, I stayed over the tracks. My well, Nino stayed here for years. Or this house been, been been here longer than him, you feel me? Type shit. So, uh, my godfather I also met, you feel me, years ago too, you feel me, when I was a young nigga around. They, they kind of like adopted me around, like, you know, like 12 years old, 13 years, no, like 13 years old. They would see me always mobbing and shit. Man, what's up with, uh, what's up with you, man? They like, man, you 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 look you look like a little mixed kid, like a little Puerto Rican kid. And they're like, I'm gonna call you Puerto Rico, all right? That's what my uh, godfather said. Yeah. I'm like, shit, I ain't tripping. And it was like, yeah, cause you don't look fully black. You look like a little mixed kid, yeah, Puerto Rico. And I was like, all right, shit, I ain't tripping. So for the longest, uh, like a year straight, it was Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. I got out, niggas started making their own shit. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican, Rican. Where's Rican? Where's uh Where's Rick? And then it went to Rico. You feel me, man? 
Nigga, that's what I, that's how I stuck with me. Yeah. Everybody just called me Rico. It was my neighborhood <coughs> child name, you feel me? And uh, I just barely turned it in when I got out of CYA. I was like, I want to still keep my name. But uh, I liked it that, I liked it that like Rico Suave type because they told me like Suave in Spanish mean like smooth. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I like that, like Rico, like Rico smooth. And then I was like, that shit sound plain, like Rico too smooth with T-O-O. But then I was like, nah, I want to be more like, even more like specific, like my own shit. I said the number two, Rico too smooth. And then I was like, nah, but I can't put smooth like T-H. You feel yeah. me? It got to be O-O-V-E, like smooth. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, Rico too smooth. That's what's going to be my rap name. And I ran with it. Yeah. And it's been my name since yet for years. That's why everybody know me by it with this music shit. What projects you got out right now? Right now, the uh, projects that I do got out is all old shit. But uh, I got hella new shit just being piled up right now. I'm working on an old school album right now. I got about like four tracks. I got my nigga Big Tone featured on that motherfucker. We just gotta go in the studio and knock it out. And then I sent the track to my nigga uh, Jammin2900. He from uh, Stockton, Westside Stockton. Uh, I just started reaching out to him because I, I was liking how he was doing this shit. We got a little collab going on. Uh, I got my nigga Solid Baby on a few tracks for, uh, for the ladies. You feel me? And then also I got a whole ass project with me, GB, my nigga Iggs. Uh, AC though and Babyface Wood. That's done too. Uh, and that's done, daughter, nigga. We ready, nigga. Working, trying to already. You got the, the title video. for that yet? Uh, so far, uh, we're trying to get a group name too, cause uh, you know they they was talking about over there at Thizzle like they 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 feel like uh we should have a group name like all the uh groups had back then. Yeah. We still ain't agreed on that or found that, but uh the album is gonna be called Red Alert. Yeah. Yup. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We got all this over on that motherfucker. I think we got a well about like ten tracks, ten solid tracks. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think it's. I think that's gonna go, man. That's gonna shake them up. I huh? think it's gonna shake them up, man. It's gonna be a little bit different. You feel me? We got we got a bunch of different little uh, vibes to it too. So it's gonna go. So what are your goals in this music? <sighs> really to make enough money. So that I can invest into something else, and then uh, actually like not, not even rap. I don't want to just be rapping and rapping all my life, but then again, like I know it's different when when you got fans and you build a fan base. They they still want that shit sometimes. You feel me? Well, a lot of the time, like so. I I wanna I wanna just be able to make enough to where I don't even really have to be. Do, I could do it like a hobby. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'll just drop it. Yeah. yeah. I'll just do it, drop one. Hey, man, you trying to collab, <laughs> go collab with someone, and, and they could just drop it just because. But I don't need to do it to make no revenue. I already got revenue. Yeah. So, shit like that. I want to make enough money, nigga, to where. Open another business. Up. Right. And another business, and another business, and just yeah. stick my hands in hella different shit. That way, like, I could just have steady revenue to where I know, like, all right, if I if I die, you see, I got, I got all this shit set up for me regardless of this music shit you feel me so that's that's kind of like a goal the dream get out the hood because i still i'll still be in the hood not my hood right here but i still be living in the ghetto you feel me like ain't nothing changed i'm just yeah. trying to make it bigger man you already know everybody's little dream you saying yeah how fast you write a verse hella fast i say 35 the longest and 25 being the, uh, the, the shortest. Yeah, right when you hear the well, Yeah, right when I hear it, just... And then sometimes, nigga, it don't even matter. Like, it might be a random, like... It depends how I'm feeling on that beat. If I'm like, ooh, this shit not... Nigga, I'll probably even do it in 20, 15. Just depending, you feel me? How you like to vibe out in the studio? Man, I like to pull up... Like to get a cool amount of hours so niggas ain't rushing. Uh, you know, talk about the subject, whatever. If I'm, if I, if another niggas in the studio with me, we talk about the subject, and we just piggyback off each other right in there. All right, come on, all right. You said we gonna do that. Let's do it. Boom. He go on this. He does his little shit. I do my shit. I'll be. I'll, 
probably take a little sips, a little some. I, I won't get too fucked up because it'll, it'll throw me off. Take a little sip to get me feeling warm a little bit. I'll go on the corner and shit. That's how I do it. Go on the corner. And we'll, you feel me? I just got to be in my own little my own little bubble. You feel me? That's how I like to vibe out with it, though. How do you choose who you collab with? Uh, shit. Some of you got Sada Baby on one. You got Studio. <clears throat> well, some of those, like, some of those really, like, um, through the, uh, through my, um, my record label that I was fucking with in a war, they was actually uh, supplying the money for that. So what they did for the artists is, you feel me, give them a certain little budget and whatnot, say, okay, this is what we gonna do for y'all, you feel me? Uh, you pick a uh, artist you wanna fuck with and, and we'll get it popping from there on. So niggas did it like that. And uh, when I thought of my shit, I was just thought of still be young. I'm like, you from out the way, uh, different, different uh, 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 gang, different ethnic, the whole shit is different. So I was like, fuck it, putting that shit together, let's just see what it do, you feel me? Just fuck around with it. So I picked that one and then uh, I also picked Sada Baby off that act up. I was, actually, I didn't even really have nothing for Sada Baby, you feel me? Like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, fuck, cause Nano hit me, he like, Hey, bro, what's up? I got that for you right now. I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, nigga, I got a verse, nigga. We about to get in the studio right now. He's like, can you make it out here to uh, Wooty Whoop? And he said, somewhere out uh, down south. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, I'm all the way out here in Wooty Whoop. He was like, well, fuck, can you get on the plane? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, nigga, come on, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, I'm not finna be able to do it. He's like, well, fuck, it's all good. You got something to just send? I'm like, man, hold on, bro. Let me call you back, bro. All right, click. I'm telling my cousin and shit like, bruh, this nigga say he got the, you feel me? He got it online right now, but I ain't even really got shit. He's like, well, nigga, you better figure something out. So I'm looking through my shit, and I have forgot that. Uh, back then, I wanted some, I wanted to get someone else on that uh, act of remix, but they never came through. So I had a uh, edited version. version, yeah. yeah. It just, you feel me, it fell in like that. And I'm like, yeah, all right, send that shit to him. Boom. Uh, nigga listen to it Then nigga Nano Call me back on FaceTime He like Hey bird And he's like This nigga fucking with it yeah. I'm like For real She's like Yeah uh, The homies paid this nigga For a verse for you You know what I'm saying But This nigga said that He he said You went hard He gonna give you 32 I'm like Ooh that's love I'm like So he really fuck with it If he gonna Cause all he had to do Is give me his little 16 Get up out of there Yeah right. he gave 32 what So he gave on? me An extra little woo -wah, Basically two Two of them things Doubled up on it and, and gassed the track for me like that. And that's how that one happened. So that's how the features happened with uh with that one. That shit. Who do you want to collab with? Uh more niggas out my region. Probably some more like, you know, some more down south cats. And when I say down south, I mean like Southern California. Uh one take J, uh K Line for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Blaster, or not, not Blaster, uh, Blast. Yeah. Blaster too, that's, we was been supposed to already do something. Blaster Cannon from uh, from the Rich. Yeah, he go crazy. We was supposed to been do something, so I still want to do something with that nigga too, but Blast for sure. Like, all those, you see the little, the, where I'm headed with, you feel me? Yeah. I'm just trying to uh, break out of that barrier and show my fans too something different. Like, Make something different music. Yeah, to where they like, oh, okay, like, you feel me? Because I can do it. It's not like I, I'm stuck in this shit. I just need that little, you know, if I if I do that collab, I guarantee it's going to go up. And you feel me? It, it, it's going to just go up from there. I could keep doing music like that. Tell us about your, uh, your syrup. <sighs> my syrup, that motherfucker, uh, 3,600 milligrams. It's a full eight ounce bottle. It comes sealed up, you feel me? No seal, no deal. But uh, that shit puts you on your pockets. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna lie, that shit What's puts you on your pockets. I call it the Too Smooth Juice. Too That's why I call juice. it Too Smooth Juice. Uh, but originally it's a uh, go to bed brand, you feel me? So I, col I collaborated with them, you feel me? And yeah. uh, we made the Too Smooth Juice. And, uh, yeah, I've been pushing that product for a minute. Had its little ups and downs, but the goal with that is, you know, 
get a uh, recreation or get up in the motherfucking store so it could be down south, or it could be over here, over there. Everywhere yeah, in other states. Right. Because I feel like, you know, even though it'll go recreational and the percentages and taxes and all the other shit, work, but still, it'll be official and it'll be something that it'll just keep going. Plus, it'll be promotion for me, so I'm like, nigga, that's where I'm headed with that. What you smoking on right now? Just right now, I'm smoking a little... Lemon Cherry Douce. Shout out my nigga uh, Cartel Money, man. Shout out my nigga Q, man. Uh, both them niggas collaborated on that strand right there. It came out super dope. Uh, it's like an equal uh, taste of the Lemon Cherry Gelato and the uh, Cream Douce. You can uh, taste either or. Matter of fact, here, you know, you can tap that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's what I'm smoking on right now. What's your favorite strain to smoke up? My favorite strain? Oh my god, this is a harder one. When I first started even uh, fucking with shit, like, as a kid, we we could go to timeline. Are you talking yeah, about right now? Tell, you, yeah, let us know. Yeah, let yeah, because you feel me? I'm oh. like, you know, back then, you know, we I was used to the, uh, the I was used to the GDPs, the Granddaddy <laughs> Parts. Uh, uh, the all part, the grapes, you feel me? All parts, uh, the sour diesel, yeah. gorilla glues, uh, Afghan glue, OG Kush. That was like, you feel me? When I was a young nigga, like that's that's what we was fucking with. And then, uh, uh, what else? What else came? Uh, they had like I think uh, like an orange Kush or some shit back then too. That was like that was like cool, but Miz. You feel me? The GDPs, that was just like the real gassy type shit. But, uh, yeah, those all those flavors when I was young. Now, man, I done went through a whole little phase. I done went through a cookie phase. I done smoked all the cookie up in my life. Yeah. My cookie, my, my, my lungs filled with cookie smoke, nigga. Passed that. Uh, went on to the uh, Gelato 33s. Passed that. Got back on some OG because a uh, partner of mine, you feel me? Uh, he had that original Good throwback OG. shit, yeah, yeah. So it was hardball, nice and and the nigga, it was so gassy when you smoke. So I kind of was like, you feel me? Fuck that lemon cherry and all the uh, all the other shit. You feel me? Like I'm smoking OG, OG. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then that started getting played out, and uh, lemon cherry gelato came in my life, nigga. And, and I played that out too, man. I, I just yeah. smoked so much of it. I, I've been just going, nigga, through different strains. I've been smoking everything. I've been smoking a little bit of the Cherry Chucks. Shout out my nigga Big Tom, you feel me? Yeah. I've been uh, smoking that new uh, Unk that just dropped, Uncle Snoop. That shit going stupid. Like, I really just don't have a favorite. I just be nigga smoking everything now. I'm like, you gonna just smoke it all. You gonna put it in the lungs, you feel me? Yeah. This gas is gas. Sometimes I even mix it up. Fuck it. My mama. How you prefer to smoke? Like, like what you mean? Like papers. Oh papers. yeah, you know papers, man. I was just talking to some other nigga. You feel me? The uh, I was telling this nigga how the uh, the joints had helped me because the uh, the woods and the lease and shit was nigga fucking my shit up. <coughs> Went to the hospital tripping, nigga. They basically was saying like, yeah, you smoke too much. Like they thought I smoked cigarettes. So I don't smoke no cigarettes. I just smoke weed. And then I'm like thinking, oh yeah, the backwoods. No wonder, you feel me? I'm like, fucking up your lungs up. So I was just like, I kind of really didn't have no choice. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm I'm settle down for the with the papers. But when you see me, I'm rolling doinks. You feel me? None none of those little painter joints or nothing like that. We really blowing big, yeah. and we roll some good shit in it. With the motherfucking filter in the in, in the you feel me? Yeah. You gonna have your own strain? Yeah, hopefully, man. Nigga got to uh. I'm gonna just keep pushing. You feel me? Uh. Also, nigga, just keep thinking of some, some that's like you know that's me. Like my name. You feel me? It didn't come. It didn't come fast. I had to like really like think about it, cause I didn't want anybody else having it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now you might hear a lot of too smooth at the end of niggas' name, but I feel like I done set a trend for show with the too smooth uh, little part. But uh, 
Yeah, hopefully, nigga. What would be the perfect? What would be the perfect mix? What would you mix? Man, up? nigga, I'm telling you, that's where I've been having a problem, man. Some I was OG like, see, and some gelato, nigga. You might, you might bring it. That that might be it. And you gotta mark this down, cause nigga, you, you, you remember, nigga, you, you gave me the alley oop. Yeah. Cause look, you know, I, I just telling you, I like that old school OG, cause it got that gas taste. Yeah. Like it got that little kick, you feel me? What slightly sour, but just really just gas. And then, nigga, the gelato, you feel me? It got that sweet and mellow, like you feel me? So that I might, it, yeah. hey, who knows? You feel me? But I'm still thinking of it. You feel me? Cause I want to make sure that shit right. So. I mean, I don't know. I'm still marinate on that shit right now. Yeah. What would you tell yourself at 15? Man, you, man, you a fucking, you a stupid little nigga. <laughs> nah, bruh. I mean, you got to get it together, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, moms need you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you better than that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, don't 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 listen to nobody else. You feel me? Go with your heart. You know what I'm saying? Don't follow nobody. Be a leader. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, just basically telling a nigga to get himself right. Like you feel me? Cause at that at that age, it was already a rap. I was already nigga in and out of juvenile, the whole shit. So yeah, it'd be basically get it together. Like nigga, there's a lot more shit. Nigga could have been. Nigga uh, trying to get his license, a permit or something. I could have got my permit at 16 and shit, you feel me? Like all types of little shit, you feel me? Been in public school, pop, you know? Yeah. But nigga was just fucking around. Tell him something that people don't usually know about you. Uh, let me see. I say, uh, I feel like a lot of people, like, they they have to know because I say it in my lyrics and certain songs and shit, but I don't think, you feel me, niggas hear me. So all I have to say, like, nigga, when I was a young nigga, like, when I was a kid, me and moms, you feel me, we was really, like, homeless in the streets, like, type of shit, like, we was from, like, in homeless, homeless shelters and, uh, all types of little fuck ass little spots, little uh, sanctuaries and shit to where they house uh, homeless people. Uh, me and mom's done been through it, nigga, awesome, some, some cold shit. And uh, I remember being, yeah, that little kid, you feel me, uh, just moving around, nigga, you feel me? Spot to spot, trying to figure it out. Mom's all fuck, fucked off off drugs, dropping me off at people's spots so I could live with them from from a certain amount of time to another certain amount of time. Like, that's that's why I think, like, nobody be really, like, there's only a few, you feel me? There's a lot of niggas that have really came to me, though, and were like, nigga, like, nigga, like, when my mama, like, nigga, I felt that shit when you said, whoop dee whoop dee And I'm like, I'm like, real recognized, real nigga ain't, you don't need to say no more, you feel me? I appreciate it. All I'm, I'm glad is that you was listening to what I was saying. Whether the song slap or not, nigga, if I was saying some shit and you caught on to it, nigga, good luck. So, yeah, a lot of people don't really know that about me, you feel me? I never had a really, it was crazy back then for me and moms type of shit. Hell yeah. Uh, <coughs> tell us about uh, L.A. I was like stepping down to L.A. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. We was out there fucking around with it. Uh, it was actually, uh... One of the homies, uh, video shoot. So, uh, we had a couple of uh, folks, man. I called a couple of homies and shit, like, hey, we finna uh, go down this way, you feel me? Uh, Y'all niggas slide through, you know what I'm saying? Just just so we could be on our shit, you feel me? Niggas like, yeah, it's good, okay. Well, well, we showed to the video shoot. And I got the video shoot, but the whole time, like, you know what I'm saying? There was some uh, troll ass nigga from over there, like, Somewhere down south, you feel me, Southern California. Obviously, the nigga was like a reject type nigga, and he was just trolling me, like, like don't come here, and we're gonna do this to you, and all this, you know, shit that trolls be doing. I'm not listening to this nigga, but I'm yeah. seeing the messages. I'm like, this nigga's a cat. So I finally, like, respond to this nigga just fucking around, which I should've never did. 
I'm like, whoa, whoa, we right here. But I was serious. I'm like, we really was right where we was at. I'm like, we right here, nigga, eating fucking uh, empanadas and shit, nigga. Like, we chilling, yeah. like, And they like, we like, uh, yeah, fuck you, motherfucker. Fucking woo dee woo dee woo. Fuck this and fuck that. I'm like, this nigga's a cat. So, long story short, some people uh, screen recorded that motherfucker. Turn it into a whole nother little shit. Like, me and the homies just hopped in the whip one day and just went down to Southern California and was just like, we're gonna make a little, like, video. They made us look like nerds, but nigga, if they knew the whole situation, then, you feel me? Plus, we wasn't out there hollering nothing. My mama, we wasn't. We not scared, but we not out there doing this and that and the other, you feel me? We not stupid. Yeah. No, we're not in people's hoods fucking or trying to go to certain neighborhoods and, hey, we're just gonna do this. Like, that's nerd shit. Yeah. We had, our agenda was to make sure where we was at, we got it done, we had a good time, we ate, and we was out of there. That's all it was. Saying make sure all our people that came with us stay with us and everybody good. That's what that LA trip was about. They just blew it out to some whole other little bootsy shit. You know the little YouTubers. Yeah. You know them niggas got some shit going on. So. <coughs> Bouncing back out there soon again too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm gonna be out there in Long yeah. Beach. Uh, backpack boys out there. They got their shit out there in Long Beach, San Diego. So I'm finna be out there for sure, a lot more, you feel me? And uh, I already had told you about, you feel me? I'm trying to do certain shit with uh, artists down there, so. Yeah. Might have to just go down there and just campaign, and then nigga, uh, I'm a real nigga, so I just call my thugs up, you feel me? And nigga, we'll, we'll pull up to niggas' hoods, to they sections, you feel me? Nothing on no weird shit, but we, we need business. Let's Ready make this shit, work. let's yeah. get music, let's get this shit done, boom. Let's set up a video, let's 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 knock it out in y'all hood, like we pulling up. And I feel like you feel me, I'm gonna be like not just me, but a lot of us, you feel me, our generation were were more going out our our area and shit, our genre of music or whatever they would wanna specify us as. Like nigga, I'm willing to do that because I feel like it's gonna be a good ass look. They gonna be looking at it like they know what I represent. So me being out there already is like what? Well, I'm out there, nigga, with this and so and so. If you look at it, you feel me? That's what uh, Mozzie did, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We go out there, venture off, you feel branch me? Out, yeah. Branch out and, you know, meet, have a couple little connects, meet some business people, and uh, lock it in like that. Nigga, if he could do it, we could do the same shit. So, nigga, that's what we on. What was your uh, music influences? Tupac, uh, E-40. I want to say, uh, all the old school gangster shit from my era, uh, Gangsta Dre, uh, Hollow Tip, Sebo, uh, yeah, nigga, all them throwback shit. Uh, Spice One, out the bay, you feel me? Fuck with Spice One, um, shit, nigga, who else, who else? Just a lot of, just a lot of throwback rappers. Those are the ones that, you know, was like, uh, my inspiration, you feel me? Uh, when I was young, you feel me, growing up, that's I liked that shit. Uh, I did like that that down south west coast shit too, like uh, you know, uh, Snoop, all them Easy E, you know, all the all the old school gangster shit. That was my shit growing up. I just because I had that mentality, like I was you feel me on that old school gangster shit. Yeah. So that was my shit growing up. And then you feel me, got older. Crossed over to a little bit of Dre, you feel me? Yeah. Dre had a big influence on the nigga, you feel me? He was going stupid. Like Dre? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dre. He was staying out here, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was all out there in the South, too, with it. So, uh, like, yeah, man, he had history with niggas, too. So it was like, this was like his second home. And to us, like, we was a second home. Like, we the same shit. Yeah, those were all my little inspirations and shit. People I looked up to, music-wise. What are some uh, positive you got out of this music? The positive I got out the music, for real, for real, is helping other people get through little struggles and shit, you feel me? Niggas done, uh, hit me up, yo, woo, woo, like, tell me a situation about their life and shit. Or uh, something that happened to their brother or something. And, 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 oh, my, hey, my, my brother fucking just got killed. Woo, woo, woo. Like, 
Nigga, he loves your shit, bro. He would always sing this one song like this was his favorite shit. That right there alone is like, damn. Like, you feel me? Nigga, niggas, niggas is out here playing that game, you feel me? Like, yeah, nigga, yeah. Nigga, nigga, something happened, you feel me? They ended up getting smoked like that. That shit crazy, but they, they was fans of my music, so, like, me was able to help them in, in, in some way. They fucked with it. That shit, that's just like a big little shit to me, you feel me? Make it worth it, though. Yeah, yeah, it's worth it, so that's like real positive right there. How do you deal with the negative? The negative, I just, uh, you know, taking the positive. A lot of the positive just overweighs the negative, so the negative is just, it ain't shit to me after that. At first, I'll be like, damn, bro, all this negative shit, whoop, whoop. <coughs> and then I'm like, wait, you feel me? Look at the positive side. There's a lot more positive shit than this negative shit because they ain't really got too much to say. Or there's not really much they could do to, uh, you know what I'm saying, knock me off my shit. What's up with videos? I know you dropped a video recently too today, right? Or yeah, 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 All Star. I just dropped that motherfucker. It was real fast. Uh, I got up in the studio. I didn't take my time with it or nothing. Uh, I just went in there to talk shit. Just to uh, throw out real quick, you feel me? Because I ain't been doing shit like that, so. I was just trying to uh, get some content out there real quick. So when people look you up, how can they look you up? On IG? On uh, IG, they can find me under, uh, official underscore Rico Too Smooth. You know what I'm saying? Catch me up on TikTok. Same thing. Official underscore Rico Too Smooth. Yeah, get at me, man. That's where you find me. What about uh, on Spotify and iTunes? They look up. Just look up Rico Too Smooth. R I C O, the number two, S M double O V E. Yeah. Anything else you want to let them know about? Oh, man. We got a lot of shit going, man. Uh, check out my folks, man. Bro Jackson behind the lens, man, doing his Dougie. You know what I'm saying? My nigga right here from the tank, man. You know, we going in like this is just the beginning, man. Stay tuned. A lot more content finna be dropping. Yeah, you know, with the pull up, man, bro. Jack behind the lens. Rico too smooth. Good looking, man. I'm young monk. You know what it is, man. Tune in. Yee.